sometimes in the chaotic world of professional wrestling, things just don't make sense. Like how come that guy got a title shot? Or how could that referee fall for that trick again? Or how come people aren't constantly getting arrested for attempted murder? To try and fill in those and the many, many other logic gaps in pro wrestling, companies will often use an authority figure character. Someone who fills the role of the top dog is the storyline reasoning for any made or unmade decisions. Over the years, pro wrestling has seen all manner of chairmen, presidents, directors, executives, general managers, and various Nepo babies. At a certain point, it felt like it had all been done. But there's only one company that when asked whatever happened to predictability, scoffed at that notion, and decided there was only one man who could best hold their mantle as commissioner. Bob Saget. <laughs> it's Bob Seger! Ah, oh, crap! Most companies wouldn't have named the guy who played Danny Tanner as their authority figure, but Chikara Pro wasn't like most companies. Founded in 2002, Chikara Pro was started by independent wrestlers Lightning Mike Quackenbush and Reckless Youth. Reckless left the company shortly after its creation, so a lot of the early creative vision can be traced back to Quack. Quack combined his adoration of Mexican Lucha Libre with his fandom of American comic books and mashed them together to create the colorful world of Chikara Pro. Over the years, the company would serve as a home promotion for so many future stars. Stars like Eddie Kingston, Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, Ricochet, Claudio Castagnoli, Brody Lee, and so many more I don't have time to list. But while the talent in the company was incredible, what really set Chikara apart at the time was that it had an actual sense of humor. Pro wrestling often takes itself far too seriously for a pretend sport where people fake fight in costumes, but the early 2000s were an especially serious time in wrestling. Chikara stood out because it embraced just how silly wrestling can be. While other wrestling companies were the home base of guys like CM Punk and the American Dragon, Chikara was the home base of guys like CP Monk and Dragon Dragon. There were plenty of other wholly unique characters like the time-traveling Night Lance Steel, the octogenarian Darkness Crabtree, the party pirate Jolly Roger, the wrestling businessman Mr. Zero, the patriotic primate US Ape, the Pennsylvania construction worker Shane Storm, and so many others. Chikara's smart-ass sense of humor didn't just extend in the ring. Despite being an obviously small, independent company, Chikara pretended it was much larger than it was, complete with a chain of command and a board of directors. There's no real exact date for this, but at some point in the first couple years of Chikara, they just simply mentioned on their website that their commissioner was Bob Saget. This was in the early 2000s before Bob Saget had a career resurgence, and hell, at that point in time, he was probably best known as the thing Tourette's guy yelled when he was frustrated. Oh, Bob Saget! While it was a silly bit for Chikara to name the host of America's Funniest Home Videos as their commissioner, at a certain point they decided they should probably have an actual in-person authority figure. So in 2004, they debuted a member of their board of directors, Cavalier Jones. Jones was played by Quack's childhood friend, Clayton Morris who most people know is either a Fox News contributor or his alleged role in an alleged real estate scam in allegedly Indiana. After Jones was written out of the promotion, he was replaced by the new director of fun for Chikara, Leonard F. Chikarasa. Chikarasa had become the main authority figure on screen, but it's clear he was acting as a proxy for the wishes of Commissioner Saget. There are plenty of running gags over the years about Saget being in the building, but you know what? He just left before the show started. They teased his appearances a few times, including one instance when they're trying to find a new partner for Eddie Kingston by drawing a name out of a hat. Eddie Kingston's tag team partner. Let's try again. Bob Saget. Bob Saget. He wasn't in Reading. He's probably not any man. But he's on the roster. He's in the Chicago yearbook. He's on the t-shirts. He is in the area. He's a, he's a graduate of Temple University in Philly. The same weekend that saw Bob Saget miss a chance to team with Eddie Kingston, saw the team of Gran Akuma and Icarus in action. They were known as the friends in similar tights, but they were better known by what Sebastian Bach would have called them. What if we call it Fist? I like it. Fist. Nobody would have known it at the time, but Fist would be the catalyst for what finally got Commissioner Saget to make his first public appearance in Chikara. But to understand how he got involved, we have to go back to May of 2005 in a match between Fist and the tag team of Mr. Zero and Shane Storm, better known as Men at Work. Both teams were technicos, or good guys, and had wrestled several time limit draws. The stage was set for a final match with no time limit. To the shock of everyone, Men at Work defeated Fist in less than 5 minutes. Fist took the loss uncharacteristically poorly and stormed to the back. After an admission, they came back to apologize, but when Mr. Zero and Shane Storm went out there, Fist snapped. 
During the fracas, they injured Mr. Zero and put him out of action for several months. This assault turned them to instant Rudos, or bad guys. They continued their feud with a partnerless Shane Storm over the summer, which included Storm defeating Icarus in an emotional match for Chikara's Young Lions Cup. By the time Mr. Zero returned from his injury, Storm had then set his sights on defeating Gran Akuma, and their feud was to be settled in the most important type of match in all of Chikara, Lucha de Apuestas, Mask vs. Mask. Because Chikara was so heavily influenced by Lucha Libre, they embraced the tradition of masked wrestlers. A mask is sacred to a luchador, and they will go to any lengths to protect it. To lose the mask is to lose their whole wrestling identity. It is the highest stakes in all of Lucha Libre, and it became the highest stakes in all of Chikara. Storm and Akuma hated each other so much that they were willing to risk it all to beat the other. Despite his new Rudo attitude, Akuma was unable to defeat Shane Storm and was forced to unmask. Fist took the loss of Akuma's mask hard and set forth on a path of destruction. The two of them, but especially Icarus, developed a mean streak nobody expected. During another match with Men at Work, Icarus took Mr. Zero out for good with a tornado pedigree to the floor. This was Zero's last Chikara match for four years. Icarus also injured the party pirate Jolly Roger and essentially ended his Chikara career as well. Shane Storm needed help if he was going to fight back against the duo and so he recruited fellow Technico Jigsaw. There isn't a lot of context needed for Jigsaw's involvement, other than he was helping out his friend Shane Storm. He had wrestled Fist before, but there was no reason for any special level of disdain for the pair. Or, well, there wasn't until a point in the match where Icarus broke Jigsaw's nose. That incident sparked a feud that lasted through the spring of 2006. Both men traded wins, but the feud rarely stayed in the ring. It got to the point that virtually any time they shared a ring together, it would just end up with their fellow Rudos and Technicos trying to separate the two. I said earlier Chikara was a silly promotion, but there wasn't anything silly about this. It was just two dudes who hated each other. In the ultimate show of disrespect, Icarus began ripping Jigsaw's mask and attempting to claim it as his own. Finally, on June 25, 2006, in the famed ECW arena, the feud reached its out of control apex, when an unhinged Icarus successfully stole Jigsaw's mask. As he taunted Jigsaw, Jigsaw offered a challenge. He'd put his mask on the line but only if Icarus would put up his hair. I mentioned earlier about the Mass vs. Mass match being the ultimate type of match in Jakara. That's true, The Mass vs. Hair is right behind it. If losing your mask is losing your identity, losing your hair is losing your dignity. It's humiliating to sit there as your opponent shaves you bald, especially for someone with a luxurious mane like Icarus. Stupid, sexy Icarus. With that potential for humiliation of mind, Icarus decided to duck the match. But like all things in Jakara, it wasn't his decision. Leonard after Carson rushed out and let everyone know to look at the monitor because he got word of an important announcement. Hey, Chikara fans. This is uh, Commissioner Bob Saget here. Yes, I'm a commissioner and I'm also a gynecologist, so put them up and hope it doesn't get too cold in the stirrups. I'd like to make the main event of our July 22nd card official. Jigsaw will face Icarus in a mask versus hair match. We'll see you there. As you might imagine, this was insanity. Commissioner Bob Saget had actually appeared in Jakara to the surprise of basically everyone. Very few people were clued in on the idea, including the commentator Larry Sweeney, who expressed utter delight. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming. Did anybody else? I had no idea. No idea that was coming. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man, alive. As Icarus literally yelled, damn you, Bob Saget, and Jigsaw celebrated his future match, the question quickly dawned on people. How the hell did they get Bob Saget? The full story has seemingly never been told, but I was able to piece together most of it through various sources. According to former Chikara referee Derek Sabato, his recollection was that Saget was filming a segment with one of Quack's friends, who I assume would be Clayton Morris, but I can't confirm, and that friend told him, hey, I got Bob Saget in studio, do you want to do something about that? This led Quack to quickly write a promo which Saget recorded in one take, hence why the commissioner of Chikara, Bob Saget, pronounces it Chikara. Why didn't someone tell me? Oh, I've been making an idiot out of myself. The story tracks with what Quack has stated publicly. On his now-defunct podcast, Deep Blue Something, Quack and former Chikara referee Bryce Rensberg talked about how they got Saget. Without revealing just how he got the video, Quack explained that it was an extremely quick turnaround and the DVD of the footage was actually overnighted to him. When he got the footage, he was delighted. 
but also deflated because the footage was fantastic, but almost unusable. So, perhaps not realizing exactly the audience that would be seeing this, the original cut of it that was delivered to us, not unlike his stand-up, was quite blue. It contained a number of obscenities and innuendos which were entirely inappropriate. And I remember getting this, and of course it, I, it was with due anticipation, and I popped this into uh, my DVD player, and the disc starts to play, of course, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how on earth are we going to show this in this in this state to the audience? Like, we can't use any of this. It's how we we really need. This is important. It's the first on screen appearance by Commissioner Saget. Luckily, the video was edited down to become more family friendly, and Quack kept this a secret from virtually everyone. Most of the reactions in the Bob Saget appearance are genuine surprise. As far as I know, neither the uncensored Bob Saget video nor the footage of the ECW Arena crowd watching the clip on the big screen have ever been released. To my surprise, Bob Saget actually remembered doing this favor for Chikara. During an episode of Opie and Anthony, he had a conversation with one of the interns who was training at Chikara's wrestling school. There's a wrestling thing? You're kind of the commissioner of That's funny that you say that. Somebody came up to me at the end of a show one night and said, look into the camera and say you're the commissioner of wrestling. And I just said it into a camera. And then some guy just put it on the web and says, I'm the commissioner of wrestling. So everybody, everybody thinks I'm the commissioner of wrestling. Yeah, I know that guy. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was like weird. It was, it's not even true. I just got hazed. Regardless of whether he knew what he was doing or not, the match Commissioner Saget made still had to happen. Jigsaw was able to cleanly defeat Icarus and claim his hair. Icarus tried to run away but was shocked when Jolly Roger and Mr. Zero made surprise returns just to make sure Icarus got his comeuppance. Icarus's long, luxurious mane was gone. Stupid, sexy Icarus was now just stupid Icarus. Bob Saget never made another on-screen appearance at Chikara. His tenure as an off-screen character didn't last that much longer either. In the universe of Chikara, Bob Saget was forced to resign from his commissionership in disgrace. It's far too convoluted to really try to explain, but ultimately involves Chris Hero, Kaiju Big Battle's Dr. Cube, and a mystical and mysterious amulet called the Eye of Tear. It's probably best not to ask any follow-up questions. We don't have all day. In order to prevent a power vacuum, the Chikara board directors appointed a new commissioner, one to restore dignity and class back to the position. The man chosen to take Chikara to the next level, the new Chikara commissioner, you guessed it, Dave Coulier. Oh, come on now. Cut it out. Quit it. Come on, knock it off. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. If you're interested in seeing more of Chikara Pro, head over to independentwrestling.tv. It has the full Chikara archives. Don't worry, I did you a solid. I put a link in the description.